along with a uh, box that if you have questions and you want to start typing those questions in as you have them, um, you can leave them. You can do that. I'll, I'll leave specific time for questions at the end. Um, where myself or any other presenters will be able to answer those questions for you. And so um, what I will ask is that I know that several of you have let me know that there are more than one of you sharing the same computer or, or sitting on this together. And so to ensure that I make sure that everyone has the proper CPDU, um, or CEUs uh, for your tracking system, if you can just send me an email when we're done today, and I'll remind you at the end, um, but if you could just send me an email with the list of um, who is sitting at your computer and their email addresses so that I can make sure that I send them their right CPDU form. Um, I'll do that now again, I'll remind you at the end, but if you could just do that for me, that would be fantastic. So that I, I have the list and otherwise it'll just be the people, the person who signed in. Um, as far as the email, um, it is jmarcello, J-M-A-R-C-E-L-L-O, S-O-I-L-L dot org. Um, and I just typed, oh, is that privately? Sorry, only one person got that. Let me try that again. It's going to everyone now. Uh, and it's J M A R C E L L O at S O I L L dot org. You can just send an email to me. That would be fantastic. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Today is all about respect campaigns and um, how to kind of implement them either at your school or specifically in your classroom. Um, we have some amazing uh, presenters that are going to help us out here today. So we are going to go ahead and get started with uh, Chris Roca, and Chris is um, an administrator at School District 23 in Prospect Heights. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, welcome, and um, today we're just going to spend some time sharing ideas regarding respect campaigns. Um, I'm sure with the variety of people attending the webinar, Everybody has had different experiences in what they've done in their buildings or they haven't done anything yet. So they're anxious to hear about um, what, what people have done out there. Uh, so we'll get started. Uh, the second slide, it just gives you um, a definition, uh, if you want to call it that, of um, spread the word and the word. That is where um, things started. And it's been an ongoing effort Special Olympics and Best Buddies, um, in addition to a variety of other supporters, to raise the conscious awareness um, in society about the dehumanizing and hurtful effects of the word parted, and encouraging people to pledge to stop using the word. And um, over the years, um, it has turned into a full-fledged um, campaign. Schools are doing um, activities around this. Uh, pain throughout the school year, um, and over the years also we've, um, it, it started out as um, R word, um, to use um, of the R word, and transitioned into more of um, respect campaigns, um, just because as, uh, as the program has grown and, and more and more people have been uh, wanting to participate and to raise awareness. Um, the age group has also um, expanded down to younger populations. So, um, you know, some of our younger uh, students don't necessarily know what the word retarded is. They may have not heard it. Um, so, it's not something, obviously, that we want to start teaching them if they haven't heard the word. So, um, you know, res the respect campaigns kind of um, were were said more in the earlier grades, and that seems to have caught on as well. Um, there is an official R Word Day, and this year I believe it's March 4th. Um, and drawing is that Unicity Shriver Day as well? Yeah, Unicity Shriver Day is in September. Oh, that's in September, okay. So, um, so what I want to do today is give you an opportunity um, to talk about how to build your campaigns and give you some ideas of um, what things have been done in other school districts. So on the next slide, um, we just talk a little bit about, you know, start having the conversation early 
about um, what you want to do for your respect campaign. And whether that's one day, whether that's a respect week, it's up to you and where you are as a, as a school building, as a district, on how you want to, how we, you want to focus things. So if you're starting out, it might just be doing one day, and maybe it is March 4th, that's the day. Um, fine, um, but you definitely want to begin planning um, early and um, talking about what activities you're going to be do, doing that respect day or respect week. Um, I know about solutions. Uh, <laughs> I hear some stuff in the background there. Um, so, uh, uh, if you things um, previously, you definitely want to take a little time to talk about um, activities that you've done previously. If they're effective, what's worked, how people reacted. Um, depending on the audience that you are um, targeting, uh, school, middle school, uh, your high, high school, college, um, you know, you're really going to um, adjust your t activities based on what each of those um, populations is going to be able to handle. So you'll want to review if you've already done some activities, whether or not they were appropriate for that age group, and if not, what needs to change. Um, sometimes you might, um, when you're brainstorming for activities that you're going to be setting up and doing for this year, um, one of the things you might want to consider is, you know, maybe there's a specific uh, group of people you want to target this year. So you know, maybe if you're um, in a middle school, let's just say, um, and it's your first time um, running respect campaign, you know, maybe you're you're doing it with just one grade level. You're going to start with sixth grade, and then the following year you're going to add. Add the sixth graders and do seventh graders, which had, went through the respect campaign the previous year. Um, you know that, that's definitely one way of approaching it. Um, I know there's a lot of bullying and um, uh, um, initiatives going on in schools. Um, to approach it, and, and we talked a little bit about this in our district, is trying to figure out how to now have some several different groups, um, you know, focusing on the same topic of respect, but how could we work collectively, collectively together? So, you know, how could your project unify the activation committee, work with student council or student advocacy group or, you know, whatever kind of club you might have in your building that is, um, you know, is also talking about those same types of um, uh, you know, verbiage that you're using in schools with respect and um, bullying and things like that. So uh, that is definitely another approach you can take when you start um, building your campaigns is working with other groups within your building. Um, we'll provide you um, some of the other presenters um, have some templates and some guides that will help you set up some of your campaigns. So um, we're going to go a little bit into those next so that you have something general, email all those things out to you so you have something to refer to um, when you are planning step-by-step -step guides that will assist you in um, putting some of those things together and get you started. So, um, so on slide, we start talking a little bit about activity ideas. Um, so I think that's super easy to do and get started with um, is just doing a pledge drive. Uh, you know, picking your either your your respect day or respect week and running a drive during lunch or if you're high school study halls um, where you can have students and teachers sign a banner um, pledging and supporting the elimination of the uh, derogatory use of the R word or, you know, respecting or their support of respect and respecting others um, and respecting people with differences. So, um, it's super easy to do. You put banners on the wall or on the tables, have kids as they come in for lunch, um, send those banners, and then by the end of the week, they're filled up and those can be displayed across the, the school building. So, um, that, that's really a great thing. Um, the um, perspective is, um, Go having some type of assembly in your school building. Um, and I think uh, Megan is going to share a template from Mount Vernon for us. Hello, um, this is Megan from Vernon. We have um, a template that's going to be emailed out to you. Um, but so the information in the template is just kind of like some guides 
it's about some planning activities. Like you might need to obtain permission from um, an administrator, so you might need a, a letter to the principal. Um, schools, you know, depend on what they might require. They, they might want to just have an outline of the form of the assembly, or they might want to have actual script. So it's important to have that information well in advance, so you can plan accordingly. Uh, some districts require maybe an opt-out uh, parent letter uh, for their children to opt out of assemblies. Um, so make sure that you have that prepared as well if needed. Um, and just being able to prepare the students for an assembly through some daily announcements or if you plan to do any type of school-wide lessons just to help establish some prior knowledge and then there's some publicity. And um, it's always fun to include the media to try to see if they will come and take pictures and to be able to feature the assembly because chances are you'll be putting a lot of work into it and it would be nice to be able to see the students featured and to be able to see the message reach a larger community than just the school itself. Um, and if you utilize social media um, to use blurbs within your social media, Twitter or Facebook, um, and to set up hashtags that you might ask the students to use, uh, might be a little bit more appropriate for high school or college as opposed to the elementary school or the grade school. And um, also include a um, Time. The template will include timelines about what types of things you should do two months prior, um, a month prior, or two weeks prior. Um, I would highly recommend studying an actual script with um, the, the guest speakers, videos, activities, performances, and um, studying timelines for each person's um, section of the assembly, especially given a, a certain amount of time. Some Guest speaker types. Um, it would be always great to hear from the athletes and to hear from the peer partners. If your athletes can do a standalone speech, that would be great. If not, utilizing that peer partner in a supportive role and helping them um, implement their speech would be another nice idea. Now, and we have, each year we've done the assembly, we have included a parent or a family member of an athlete. And to be honest, that usually sends the message to the student body and to the faculty and staff who are present in the assemblies. Um, I that's that's one speaker I would highly, highly recommend um, to be able to include if, if your district allows um, outside speakers of that sort. We try to feature a local celebrity just to try to gain um, uh, excitement. Uh, we have a very uh, strong supporter through our sports caster at our local radio station, or I'm sorry, local um, news station, and she usually fulfills that role for us. And uh, maybe a respected teacher or coach, and some respected students like student body president. Um, picking out which, if you want to, if you want to use any audio visual, like video clips, um, any of the essays um, that are on the internet, or through um, a YouTube, like the uh, What Would You Do TV program clips. Some schools utilize those um, assembly. Um, having the students actually um, a whole school pledge, um, having a, a follow up of some sort, or if you school wide lesson, um, to maybe try to have some kind of like a, a student pair reflect on what they learned through that school wide lesson. And um, if you had any contest winners, whether they were side project unified, like the essay, uh, the photograph, or the photograph contest. Um, or the video contest, if you have any submissions or winners, if you want to hold a premiere viewing of the video at the assembly, or any local contest, like a door decorating contest, a t-shirt design contest, or any type of artwork, uh, if you'd want to display any of the pictures um, as part of the assembly. Any, any type of local flair that you could include your school to help encourage engagement, maybe a musical performance or some kind of an athletic contest, uh, maybe a unified game, um, and at one school, I think maybe District 54 had to, you know, assembly, they had all of their um, athletes and peer partners do, say, you see me, I want you to see, and they filled in the blank, and um, have, you know, athletes, peer partners, teachers, custodians, secretaries, administrators, get everybody involved um, for the of these things, and that, that also can send a really uh, strong message. And um, Sven has available the uh, script that we've used at Mount Vernon High School. Um, feel free to use any of that. Um, we, we have to have ours fully written out for everyone 
Um, and if administration wants to review it, it's also available uh, for that review as well. And, um, and Megan and Laura just chime in as we kind of go through some of these other um, activity ideas. But um, the next one is a uh, disability awareness day. Um, really including all of your social media pieces um, on something like this where um, going on Facebook and liking the spread the word to end the word. Um, Facebook page, the Special Olympics page, the Project Unify page. So, um, you know, there is a lot they can do through social media now um, that could help with running a disability awareness day. Um, they're also um, tweeting about the activities that you're doing uh, at SO uh, Illinois and at PU Illinois. Um, you can use a, a, a hashtag Project Unify and spread the word and the word to retweet some of those things. Um, any other social media? I know there's there's a ton. Instagram, all those good things. Um, thinking of other ways to keep your message going as you're doing activities that week or um, during your campaign. Um, another thing. Get in there to you. Use the hashtags of Project Unify and, and spread the word on the word um, because what will happen is the national um, campaigns will pick those up and will actually retweet your local stuff if you use those hashtags. So um, we'd love to see when our when our schools from Illinois get national recognition and that is absolutely one way to be able to do it. Uh, well, probably in a lot of the examples um our public service announcements and actually on the R Word um website, which um you'll get that um address at the end of the PowerPoint. Um they have a lot of examples um and videos of different public service announcements that you can do throughout your week. I know a lot of schools it's a quick easy way to do something um right at the beginning of the day in the morning with announcements, do a public service announcement. Um, run a quick video um, in that homeroom or first advisory class or whatever you have in the beginning. Um, that's that's something really um, super easy, and the kids really get into um, you know reviewing all of them and kind of deciding which ones they think are most effective for their peers. Um, so that's that's a quick and easy thing to do to add to your campaign. Um, Megan added uh, mentioned about the contest. Um, that we're doing through Project Unify, but you know you can also run local contests, um, uh, contest, the teacher design contest, um, she's been decorating your door. Uh, different ways that you can get all of the classrooms engaged in um, reflecting on the respect campaign, and so um, you know run a contest. You can um, we're going to talking a little bit about the R word um, or the respect. Uh, um, shirts and, and things that you guys can order, um, you know, those are great prizes for these types of contests that really get uh, kids and staff motivated. <laughs> so um, if you have a local um, paper uh, or a school paper or um, I know now even, um, you know, teachers and schools have all of their own sites and are um, blogging and things like that. Have some of the students write articles, um, uh, a little bit about the respect campaigns that are going on in their schools. Um, and they can add that in a variety of different ways. Um, like to hold some type of fundraiser that's associated with their respect campaigns. Some people might run them outside of that time frame. Um, so I believe Laura has a template that she's going to share with us. Us, um, regarding how to run or conduct your own um, fun run or like a 5K run um, in order to do a fundraiser to raise money both for your own Special Olympics program in your building or district and as well as Special Olympics Illinois. Hi, this is Laura Baumgartner and I'm a teacher at Pontiac High School. Um, what I talk about, if I if we could go back though, I could talk a little bit more about that poster contest because we've been pretty successful with that. Um, I'm in a high school. And, uh, what we've done the last two years is held a poster contest with the area grade schools. 
piece out a letter letting them know about the poster contest and then also offer for a group of athletes and peer partners to come over and present it and talk about respect. And then um, we give out prizes. Anybody who, who uh, makes a poster, we give a wristband to, and then we give um, gift cards and T-shirts to the winners. And we have really gotten a lot of, of good feedback and a lot of posters and a lot of interest from all the students doing that. So it's a neat way for high school students to connect with the grade school students. And grade schools could absolutely do it within their own school, too. Um, the, yes, the fundraiser um, run or 5K, I, I, um, we, Pontiac High School started that. Two years ago, we do a 5K run because I'm a runner, so I thought, oh, that would be fun to do. And I wanted to keep the message of respect going. It's just too early in Illinois to hold a 5K. So we are in April, which actually probably is, is early, too. So it might even be good to do it in May. And um, Jen is going to share with you a whole template on how to conduct that 5K run. Well, can you see it on my screen or no? I can see it, but I also printed it out. Okay. So, so it's, it's kind of so I read it on that, that screen. There's a way to make it bigger, but oh well. <laughs> but really, and, and to go through it just a little bit, there's a lot of guidelines for you on pre-race, all the things that you need to do before uh, deciding that you're going to do a race. Uh, just from like, is it be a timed race or not timed? If you choose to do an untimed race, your life will be very easy. That's a fun thing to do, and um, you will still make a lot of money. And you can determine your cost. You, and one thing I would absolutely really recommend is that you get permission from your school, from your uh, your city, the letter, the permission, whatever you have to fill out in your city to do it, unless you're just doing it right on your school ground. And also check on liability and insurance. Type three; those are probably the B three, in my opinion, the three biggest things you want to make sure you do before you start a race. And then, if you go through when you get this template and you go through it, you will see all the different things that you need to do before the race, on the race day, and post race. And it's one of those learning curves. Once you do it once, to do the next time. If you if you do run races. You have a good background on how a race should be held and what should be done. And I just know it's a really neat way to connect with not only your high school students, but also the community at large. Because one of what high school's goals is to make sure that our message of respect is not just held within the walls of Pontiac Township High School, but that we reach the grade schools through the poster contest and we're reaching the community. Um, at large, as many other high schools, anything that we can get involved. So if any, if you are interested in doing a 5K run or a fun run and you get this out and you have more questions, I'd be more than happy to talk to you individually or you could email me or whatever, and I'd be very, very happy to go over anything that I have. Now, I don't have all the answers, that's for sure, but I would be very happy to share with you anything that I do know. Um, for how to conduct that 5K race. Okay. Add to that real quick. Um, we also have the brand new fundraiser that we uh, that you got in your emails in regards to Change for Champions. Which is a very easy fundraiser to host. Where actually um, part of the money comes to help. Special Olympics and part of the money um, would stay back at school. So um, if that's something that you are interested in, remember to go back to that real long-winded email that I sent out um, and you'll find all the information for the uh, Change for Champions program. Chris? Um, so just to kind of continue a little bit, um, I had spoken earlier about um, using some of the uh, R Word videos using through your PSAs um, on the Special Olympics website, which is also at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, I'll link that as well as the R Word um, website has videos um, uh, only Special Olympics athletes, but also um, of you know famous actors, athletes, really talking about. 
um, eliminate the R word, what it means to them, um, people use that word. Um, so there are some very powerful videos um, regarding how to eliminate and the use of the R word, and those are really some neat videos. Again, we've had the students go through and, and watch them and pick the ones that they think their peers will be most moved by. So, you know, having those having students really participate in choosing those, I think, is important. Um, and um, on the Special Olympics website, uh, we also have access to the Get Into It curriculum. Um, our students um, use that as a resource. Um, I know students use that as a resource to when they're planning their respect campaign week. Um, they try and use the Get Into curriculum to pick out just one or two activities for the week that um, they want to uh, on during advisory period. So that's like a homeroom period at the beginning of the day for us. Um, and um, they go through the Get Into It curriculum. They pick out the activities. They read through them. They make sure that, that it's something that is meaningful and um, make sure then to pull all the materials for each of the classrooms, like there needs to be flyers or handouts, they make sure they're all copied. Um, so the Get Into Curriculum is a nice resource when um, you're looking to do something more than just, you know, sharing videos and hang announcements. These are actually activities where kids are talking about, um, you know, what that, what the R word means to them and how to um, respect each other. Um, sharing information about themselves. Um, so that is definitely a great resource, and it is on the Special Olympics website, um, the electronic version of the curriculum. So, and it's broken up into um, like early elementary, late elementary, middle school, and high school sections. So you can quickly jump to what grade level is appropriate for your building. Um, so real quickly, what you did through for the whole school? We did a um, school-wide lesson last year that um, our students helped plan and prepare. Uh, like Chris had talked about, them picking out what types of activities or lessons they want to um, include that they felt that their uh, classmates would be the most moved by. And um, this year, our students um, did we did a couple of videos um, from the What Would You Do? Um, so on PBS maybe I'm not sure what, what station and um, we period class um, this period we have um, upperclassmen and separated from freshmen so in the they're in the freshman academy classes so it's a little bit we don't technically have a homeroom but that, that might be the closest we could possibly have and um, I made sure to you know we aligned it to the only um, learning standards for social emotional learning goals and. Um, we had Venn diagrams with graphic organizers. We had the students, you know, discussing um, and comparing how um, some, some words that are used uh, hazardly um, are not acceptable, like some other words are not acceptable, so why would the R word be acceptable? And um, in high school, uh, we, um, we the fact that it's R word and it's not just um, react week. You know, we, we include part of that as well. Uh, but we definitely try to focus on haphazard use of the R word. And um, our um, lesson includes videos, and we provided um, the handout for, for the teachers, and then we also created a actual um, that had all of the videos embedded. Um, a lot of times, if we've done school wide lessons, like through PBIS. And if it includes videos, usually there's a lot of technical problems, everyone trying to get into YouTube at the same time. So by just embedding it directly into the PowerPoint, it, it's the most successful. Uh, so I definitely recommend doing that. Will you be sending the school wide lesson and the PowerPoint to or I will um put up so you can show them real quick. The, the PowerPoint that we had created. 
And um, if you see on the left of the screen where the box is with the X, they're actually there. It's just embedded. And so when you actually play it, um, this one, it, it does actually show up. It looks like it might not, but it does. And oh, ABC News program. And um, it was of the uh, young man with Down syndrome that worked at a grocery store bagging groceries, and how the they, their actors um, responded by you know calling them retarded and saying you know that they shouldn't work there, and it's just you know wasting their time, and to see how the different people react to it. And um, news brought it to my attention. I didn't know it existed, and we pulled and watched it, and they said, "Yep, this is what." You know, we use this one, and we also borrowed Pontiac's um, public service or PSA video that they created um, a couple years ago. You have used the word. Um, we use their video as well. That was one that my students really um, and felt that the, their classmates would um, really get the message from. And uh, that's, that's it. and they're not required of all the teachers to teach it. Um, our administration didn't want to um, require the teachers to do it, but we, you know, made it available. Um, then a couple of mice came back and was mad that they had helped create it and that their teachers didn't teach it to them and didn't include it. Um, that was of that complete buy-in from our administration. But we gave them all the tools that they needed. Just go through your schedule real quick. Yeah, as we created a um, the students, you know, they came up with the different ideas of what they wanted to do during the um, R Word Week. Uh, last year, it was the Monday was Pulaski Day, but we had picked out that we would do the school wide lesson on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday we had our school wide assembly, and that was the act last year. That was the actual R Word Day, and it spread the word to end the word. And then Thursday we wanted to, but we had presented to our administration to present. We had performed last year on several occasions that it's our school to pay for a couple different teacher in services and uh, we wanted to be able to teach it to the various um, classes by freshman, sophomore, junior, senior and um, we were not allowed, the um, administration didn't want the students out of the classroom um, so we were not actually able to um, present the play to the student body. Um, our teachers, though, did get to see that in the service. And then Friday, we set up the R word booth because we felt the students felt that they wanted to teach their clients about the word and the negative effects. They wanted to have the educate component of it and have the school wide assembly kind of for the um, motivate kind of part of it and then to do the play performance for the activate kind of portion of it and then also the activate with the R word booth. To include to say, to not just ask them to pledge at the beginning of the week, but give them an opportunity to truly learn about it so when they do take the pledge, that it's a meaningful um, thing they truly take ownership of taking take the pledge. To not the word. Perfect. Thank you, Megan. Yes. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, kind of our theme. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet from the, the logos and stuff like that, we um, our theme for this year is uh, Got Respect. Uh, last year it was Respect is the Keys You Stuff from all of Megan's stuff. The year before that it was Stomp the R Word. Um, in Illinois, we've gone more to a respect theme over a spread the word to end the word theme and the fact that we have a significant amount of our Project Unified schools are actually elementary schools where we don't want to have to teach them a word that they might not already know. And so um, we talk about respect for everyone, uh, regardless of if they have a disability or what color their skin is or what religion they practice. Um, so that respect is our theme for this year. I think our youth activation committee that designed it did a fantastic job. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, through some of the things that we have available, I tell you that um, all of your orders are due no later than January 16th at 4 o'clock p.m. And I will tell you that is a very hard deadline. I am placing the order at 5 p.m. on that day. And because of the um, some of the items that we're get will be from overseas, it does take four weeks to be able to get those to us um, and to be able to provide things at the price that we do. So, 16 to 4 p.m. is when your order forms are due to meet. So, how much money do you get? That's a really good question, Jen. 
uh, every school um, receives some amount of money. If you are a category um, a category two school or a brand new school that hasn't really done much yet, and you're going to just this is your first year. What we're looking for is everyone gets at least a hundred dollars, and most schools, based on what forms you've turned in uh, for your school commitment letter, will get two hundred and fifty. So questions on kind of what level school you're at. If you're a category two school, meaning you're just doing one or two activities, you're doing unified sport and one other thing, it means you're a category two school. If you're doing something from each of the three, you're doing a unified sport, a youth leadership in all school, um, that you're a category one school, which means you get $250. If you have questions into, as to what category school you are, just well, and I will make sure that uh, that I get you that information. But um, like I said, most of our schools are actually category category two schools. Our theme is God Respect. Uh, you will see uh, on the I'm showing you our logos for the T-shirts. On the left, you see the God Respect with the Special Olympics logo. That is will be on the front of any of the T-shirts that we do, uh, or on many of the items that we're going to show you. And then at the back, um, they kind of did nutrition facts. So uh, the serving size is obviously no limit. And then they talk about inclusion, trustworthy, acceptance, fairness, equality, kindness, and then respect. So I think they did. A, I love um, the theme that they kind of came up with for here. I think it'll be great to uh, be able to share with any age level, regardless of if you're an early childhood facility or if you're in, in college. This is a copy of the order form. I'm actually going to pull it up in a PDF here for everyone to be able to see. Um, I'm going to it. Um, for Megan, can one of you guys tell me, do you guys see that, Brian? Yeah, Peter? I had it full screen as it can go on mine. All right, then. Um, you'll see it's a PDF form. And uh, the items that we have are, um, we have a, I'm going to get my little highlighter. We have um, the wristband, and these are a dollar each. And when Laura was talking about the fact that she gives those to anybody who submits a, um, and who submits a poster for their post events, that's what she's talking about. This is our uh, Get Respect sticker. This is actually something new. It was based on our schools asked for it because they wanted to be able to, anybody who took the pledge um, to know respect, be able to give a sticker. And so we have a sticker. They're only 10 cents, so that way you can order a large amount of them. We actually also have our temporary tattoos, uh, which was what uh, the kids very, very excited about uh, getting those uh, for everyone to be able to, to use. Um, we have a lanyard, which is a teacher favorite. Um, one of the things that was requested was a, a, a breakaway free one or one that, a breakaway one, just in case anybody pulls on it. So that is the lanyard this year. And they have um, the pen uh, that you'll see there. I tried to do some items, and I apologize, I am working around all of the chat boxes and everything on my screen. So we tried to do some items that were um, lost so that Schools who had a large number of students could also participate and get enough. Um, we have uh, the, there's this is a stadium cup. Um, anybody who's going to attend the Youth Activation Summit, we are going to teach them a, a song, the cup song, um, to the song Happy, kind of as our group activity. And so um, Youth Activation Summit participants will all get one of these cups. It's one of the ones where you fill it with cold liquid and it changes color. Uh, of the um, uh, the pack. Um, it was very important for the um, kids that they thought it would be great to utilize this as an advertising opportunity for the program. Uh, and you'll see here in the different t-shirts we have. And so each t-shirt um, is uh, $10 each. Uh, that is only the price for this time during this school. We will actually be selling these for a higher price. T-shirts are a dark gray header. They are soft style, similar to the shirts that those of you who got the purple one last year. Um, it's similar to that shirt, and the, actually the printing is in white. But when it will all the printing will all glow in the dark when the lights are off. So we, that was kind of cool. Um, the ten dollar, like I said, the ten dollar price is only for this 
for route, and then everything else after that, they'll they will be sold for a, for a higher price. They'll actually be sold for fifteen dollars. Uh, this is the it actually cost us ten dollars. About nine dollars and like ninety eight cents, I think, to be able to get the shirts to you, and so that's why um, they're only dollars for those um, for our school. As well, um, and we will sell those for twenty five. We're selling them. We do order all of these things so that um, if you want to take uh, an order of your school, um, say that you every you want to be able to offer it for all the teachers to be able to purchase one. That is absolutely fine, but they need to purchase the T-shirts for fifteen or purchase the sweatshirts for twenty five. Um, and we can place those orders with me, and I'll ship those with all of your other uh, stuff that you that you get. Um, did get a hat. Um, for one, um, that was one of the, we allow our, our youth activation committee kids to be able to pick out uh, what it is, what the items are that we offer to each of the schools at each year. And so a hat was one of them. Um, Post-it notes, which they thought was important to be able to go with the pens. And these were uh, like kind of like a beanie towel. It's a, a rail, it's a bandana, it's a neck thing, it's a headband. It's kind of everything all in one. As the gut respect will on. I'll just bring your attention to um, the last uh, two items that we have here. And those are um, probably the most popular things that we have. One is the poster, and one is the banner. And the banner um, comes with the markers that you can use to um, have everyone sign at school. And then one poster, we specifically do it so that there's better space in case you wanted to utilize those to collect pledges as well. But those are the two main ways other than online that you can collect your pledges at school. So I'd be sure to make sure that you order um, what you need. We do only order exact amounts of the posters and banners because they are fairly expensive to print. And so especially the banners, so make sure that if you want them that you do order them right away. So kind of just a little description of each of our items. When you are filling it out, as you complete it, you notice if you tell it however many things you want, it will calculate the price for you. Um, I say I want four. Yeah. I want four. Yeah. Um, I want four. So the price will automatically calculate on each line. Um, your total price will come up down on the bottom so you know exactly how much you have. If you have an overage of $250, um, you will receive a bill at school for the amount of money. Uh, so just make sure that you order exactly what it is that you are um, that you're wanting. And then like I said, if there's if you wanted to do a group buy for t-shirts or a group buy for lanyards or any of those things, we can absolutely set that up. You just need to contact me. So get the order, it's really easy. You just put your name. And it make sure that your um, all your information is correct. And this is where this is actually where the items will get shipped is our address that you provide me. Um, and when it's complete, you click the submit button. And what we'll do is it will send an email to me. Um, an email to me, and I'll send an email to the place that um, it is making the order for me. So um, it's that easy. You can also print it and fax it to me, but again, I'm going to remind you of the hard deadline of January 16th at 4 o'clock p.m. because there is no, um, no, no movement or no leaving on that. Click their phone. Um, so we're kind of uh, finishing up here. Um, just some added information for you. Like I mentioned before, the official R word, spread the end the word day is March 4th, 2015. Um, Jen would also like to know once you guys finish up your planning for your respect campaigns, if you could send an email um, about when that's going to be, even if it's you're doing a respect day or R word day. If you're doing the same day as the official day, just uh, shoot her an email and let her know um, what you have going on in your districts and buildings. Um, 
do uh, want, Jen, do you want to talk about the respect campaign kits? Sure. Um, so with those kits, lists that you're ordering, um, you will be able to, if you are coming to the Youth Activation Summit, you'll be able to pick it up. It'll be there ready for you at the Youth Activation Summit. Otherwise, it'll be shipped um, to our school the week of February 16th. So I know many of you may, may could not do your respect um, campaign during March 4th because you're in the middle of park testing. So um, some schools will do it beforehand, some schools will do it in April or May. But whenever you want to do it, it's fine. Just know that the materials that you order will not be available until at the very earliest, the week of February 16th is when they'll be shipped to you. And that, um, for those of you who um, did what was called a grant last year, there's outreach opportunities, um, funds available for you to run different um, Project Unify activities and programs in your districts. Um, but in order to um, get that funding, you need to submit the request by this Friday. Um, you can go on Special Olympics Illinois Project Unify and um, click on the Outreach Opportunities section. And there is, um, it's not a lengthy request. Um, they ask some questions about, you know, what you're looking to do in your school, why you need the funding, uh, how would you use the funding? So, for example, if you're interested in putting together a, um, a fun run or um, a 5K run, um, you want to put in a request to help um, start that in your district. So, you need some money to, um, get, uh, you know, get the uh, park district um, to rent the facility from the park district, and then um, be some money to get those goodie bags going. Um, you know, like that, you can um, put in a request if you'd like to start a, a, a unified sports program in your district. So one year we wrote for unified soccer for us to get a unified soccer program going. So we wrote for uh, some uniform shirts um, and some equipment. And um, so a variety of things that you can make requests for, um, but those deadlines um, are this Friday. Um, last I had mentioned, um, to Megan, I didn't, you know, have to let me know what the um, web is for, um, the web address is for the Pinterest page that you shared. Um, but here's just some resources that I mentioned earlier. The Get to It curriculum, there's a link for that. The R Word website, as well as the Facebook page for Project Unify. Um, Megan, can you share the Pinterest page that you were sharing with us? Um, what the web address would be for the Pinterest page? Just put it down in the chat menu. It's um, http uh, colon slash slash www.pinterest.com slash mclody, m-c-l-o-d-i slash dash word dash ideas slash. The um, Pinterest page has a ton of resources for ideas for respect campaigns. It's definitely um, worth looking at. You'll see uh, links to different videos, um, activities that have been done in uh, places all over uh, the country. So definitely uh, check that out. And it is, I know I saw Megan in the chat, you also mentioned it. Any, any questions about the assembly? Uh, Thank, you. Thank you, Megan. Oh, yeah, thanks. Um, I thought he was going to keep working, so uh, I can tell you that he was going to be here and I had to leave, so he's right. out, so you're good. Right, thanks, man. Yeah, you too. Does anyone have any questions about the um, camp ideas that were shared or about um, uh, any other respect material ordering, anything like that? Um, yes, I got a question about the PowerPoint. Um, the PowerPoint um, and the link to the recording from today, as well as all of the resources that were shared with you from uh, Mount Vernon High School, from Mount um, High School, will all be emailed to the SOAD uh, the, uh, for each of the uh, or person in charge of Project Unify at each to the schools along with the order form. Um, that will all happen tomorrow morning. 
morning uh, when I'm in the office. So that email will get sent out to everyone uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, all the PowerPoints, all the information, everything will be shared um, with the main contact at each one of the schools. So uh, if you um, if you have any questions, go to that main contact that goes to school. Or if you would like uh, a specific copy to you, just send me an email. Um, Laura and Megan both also shared their contact information in um, the chat box. So you, if you have questions specifically for some of the things that they talked about um, as well. Any other questions? Some of you may be on mute because I could hear background noise and I placed you on mute sometime during the call. Depending, I know that some of you are groups of students that are sitting in and watching the webinar with you. Uh, so if you have a question and you're trying to talk and I have not answered you, it's because you're on mute. Um, or you can type it into the chat box. So I'm going to give it another minute for everyone to answer any questions, um, to type in a question or to ask them. Um, I will stay on here for a few minutes if you wanted to ask me any questions. But if I can just remind you, um, you can right now, before you sign off, send me an email with your name and email address. And everyone who is and everyone who is sitting there with you right now, their name and email address, so that I can um, send the send you your stuff for your CPDUs. I will not um, answer if I don't get it within the next half hour then um, you will not get credited for your CPDUs for this. So I want to make sure that you get it because once the recording goes live, then anybody can <laughs> send it to me. And only those of you who actually sat in on the webinar today um, get the CPDUs. Um, I did get a question if staff want to order materials, T-shirts, sweatshirts, that kind of stuff, you can do a separate order. That is absolutely correct. So um, you place your one or for your school with the stuff that you're going to hand out free, not charging the kids, not charging anyone to participate. In. And um, maybe, and then say you can place a second order and just make sure that you clarify it when you send it to me, Jen. This is the one that we're paying for. This is the one that we're using with our school money. Um, if you wanted to do a separate order for t-shirts or sweatshirts or lanyards or whatever it might be for the school. And that T-shirt is to be sold for $15, and sweatshirts are, be, are to be sold for $25. Every other price you can sell for the price that's actually on the sheet. Uh, so the only one that's different is actually the T-shirts, and I tried to keep them as low cost as I possibly could if you were using your school money for it. Um, but if we're going to be selling them, um, that's going to help with the cost of SEP and shipping and all that stuff, so that will be $15. Um, for, and just make sure that when um, people, we can't take a credit card if somebody calls and uh, gives me a credit card number, or we do take checks or cash. And, all right, I hope everyone uh, has a good rest of their day. Thanks so much for participating, and uh, have a fantastic evening. We'll talk to you soon. John, I'm still on. Need anything? Oh, I'm good. Uh, Kristen, it's 25. If you can hear me, um, uh, you would just sell the sweatshirt for 25. If that's, uh, yep, you got it. All right. I'm good. Okay. Thank you for your help. Sure, I was a few minutes late. Oh, you're good. Right, I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. I'm going to sign off too. All right, you. Yep, yeah, no, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Megan.